Does finasteride affect strength? Since I've started taking finasteride in August of 2021, I've witnessed that I've become stronger in the gym and my strength gains have gone up. Or how about this claim? Finasteride has ruined my gym gains and I'm not able to lift anymore. Guys, when it comes to finasteride and its effects, whether perceived to be adverse or beneficial to strength conditioning and the maintenance or production of muscle mass, it's easy for false claims to sway you one way or the other on the argument that finasteride will significantly be involved in how you put on muscle and or how much strength you will have. But before we examine both sides of this discussion, the pro finasteride will make you strong versus the con finasteride will make you weak discussion, I want to start off by saying this. For me, around the same time I started taking finasteride was about the same time I started going to the gym. And in about 10 months now, I've made significant improvement. My bench press is especially what I'm proud of. I've increased it by 100 pounds, starting at 175 pounds in September of 2021 to 275 pounds in July of 2022. Now, before we move on, I think it's helpful to get a review on how finasteride works. So, finasteride works by blocking the conversion of testosterone into DHT. It does this by inhibiting the 5-alpha reductase type 2 enzyme, one of the common enzymes that converts testosterone into DHT. In a typical male, the ratio of testosterone to DHT is 10 to 1 in terms of total testosterone and 20 to 1 in terms of free testosterone. This means anywhere between 10 to 15% of a male's testosterone is turned into DHT. Just as a reminder, DHT in males who have the genetics for androgenetic alopecia, also known as male pattern baldness, benefit by using finasteride for the mere reason that a decrease in 5-alpha reductase enzymatic activity will also decrease the conversion of testosterone into DHT. Less DHT circulating in the body means less damage to scalp hair and ideally the prevention and perhaps reversal of male pattern hair loss. Now on to the claim that finasteride will make you weaker. One of the many claims that people make on the internet is that finasteride is harmful to muscle growth and strength gains. There are many reasons for this claim, from the prevalence of depression caused by the drug to instances of brain fog or really other neurological conditions. Now, the overall side effect occurrence is about 1 in 1,000 people. And these side effects are reversible after coming off of finasteride or with continual use. And in many studies, negative side effects may be attributed to the nocebo effect. The nocebo effect, for those who don't know, is basically the idea of if you think something bad is going to happen to you, well, that is actually manifested through your own thoughts. Kind of the opposite of the placebo effect. Also, DHT is considerably more potent as an agonist of the androgen receptor than testosterone is. And because of this, the assumption is that it must be significant in the regulation of muscle and strength, just as testosterone. This is simply not true. Within the body, DHT is not prevalent in the musculoskeletal system, but rather testosterone is very prevalent in the musculoskeletal system. So in terms of affecting muscle growth and strength, it cannot because it is simply not present, if not barely present, in those areas. Testosterone is what is responsible for building muscle as it can be found in the musculoskeletal system. DHT is only in peripheral tissues, like the skin, hair follicles, and also small concentrations in the testes and prostate. Also, DHT seems to lose much of its usefulness after puberty. It is an important hormone when it comes to establishing primary and secondary sexual characteristics in males. We see DHT responsible for sexual differentiation in the male genitalia during embryogenesis and during puberty for genital maturation and general sexual development, as well as body hair growth. But after puberty, DHT has all but lost its utility. In fact, in some cases, it causes problems such as prostate cancer or prostate growth and acne. As you can see in this paper by M. D. Leonard S. Marx, 2004, Table 1 displays the use of each hormone. You can check this out in the description, of course, but as you can see on the screen, DHT does not support muscle mass, but rather, testosterone does. Now, on to the claim that finasteride will make you stronger. 
One may think that if there is less 5-alpha reductase to convert testosterone into DHT, and if testosterone is responsible for muscle and strength gain, then there would be more testosterone in the body and you would be actually seeing improvements in the gym. Now, in regards to there being more testosterone, in a way, this assumption is correct because now instead of your testosterone turning into DHT due to 5-alpha reductase activity, there will be more in your body remaining unconverted. Now, there's also another mechanism in which testosterone transforms, and that is aromatization. As your testosterone goes up, you also will see a increase in aromatization, meaning testosterone converting into estrogen. But in regards to this notion that you have higher levels of testosterone, let's look at this a bit closer. Sure, there will be more testosterone in your body unconverted. However, this leads to higher testosterone levels only because you block the conversion of some of your testosterone turning into DHT. You aren't really producing more testosterone because of this occurrence. The percentage in which testosterone increases in the male body after taking finasteride is still within the normal physiological range. Finasteride reduces DHT anywhere between 40 to 70 percent. Some studies show that this has the effect of increasing total testosterone to about 10 to 18 percent as seen in Frank Z. Stanchik's et al. 2013 paper. One thing that I found interesting was this 2003 paper conducted by MD Klaus G. Roborn et al. for the ProScar Long-Term Efficacy and Safety Study. The paper concluded that men with low baseline testosterone levels who took finasteride on average experienced a 2 to 3 percent reduction of BMI relative to placebo. However, even this occurrence is subject to scrutiny. Nevertheless, it is still significant enough that it is mentioned in the study. But again, you aren't adding a significant amount of testosterone to your baseline, so this uptake in available total testosterone does not significantly do much to make a difference in most men, as, say, a recreational steroid user would see in their steroid use. So why do you feel weak? Well, how well do you sleep? Th this is a serious question. I know that sometimes I feel as if I had a rest, when in reality I only had about three to four hours of sleep due to studying in college or, well, to be honest with you, just messing around with friends and playing video games, when in reality I should have been sleeping. I'd say for some time this messed with my gym energy levels and also recovery. Sleep is one of the most important things ever when it comes to general health, let alone bodybuilding and fitness. In addition to that, nutrition is important as well. Are you eating like shit? <laughs> I mean, well, I'm also eating like shit too, but I try to limit the junk food that I have. Are you in a bulking or dirty bulk phase? I'd say in regards to bulking, I have friends that tell me that they get poor sleep since they actually started bulking. There are numerous factors in our lives that may be reducing our physical performance. And you aren't always going to be in the right place in your mind or have the right energy levels to do a heavy lift as well. Your body is going to give out eventually, especially if you're constantly lifting at your max. So try to deload once in a while. For me, in general, getting good sleep whenever I could, taking periodical breaks from the gym until my next lifting session, and slightly bulking helped me improve my bench press by 100 pounds in 10 months as a gym newbie. And I'm pretty proud of that. Plus, it also helps to have gym partners who are there with you. That's great motivation and definitely a good way to start new friendships.